Welcome back, Ashley Knuckle Faithful. We got a special short session for y'all. I'm your host, B. Woods. My right hand man, Mosey P, as always. Sure. Got Mark still asleep from last night, man. Title fight put us all asleep, but we got the win. Francis, I appreciate the cheese, my brother. We're going to do a UFC 270 recap. We got a. Uh, I'm only going to really cover the first, what well, a co-main event and a main event in this session. So we're going to jump right into it um, and get in, and talk about the co-main event, uh, what we saw from that and and new and new. What's up, Mo? Hey, that was a great fight. Like, man, it's only the second event of the year and we got two fight of the year candidates already it's crazy man it's a beautiful thing man the uh kicking off the first quarter of this season with some fireworks it's beautiful you think did not do a fourth fight absolutely 100 percent um should it be immediate i don't know i don't know i don't think so i don't think they'll do an immediate fourth fight but a fourth fight it's coming it's, it's gonna happen um my my first t- my initial take on this um, is how tough is fucking Moreno, bro? I mean, come heart, on, heart man, heart of a lion, definitely heart of a champion. Um, I counted. I stopped counting after seven. <laughs> he got dropped at least seven times in that fight, and like you said, this could be an early candidate for fight of the year. Um. I really want to give a lot of credit to Figgy because he came out patient. He showed like a lot of um, a lot of explosiveness, but in in bursts. He didn't come out like charging at him and trying to just take him out as he did like in the second fight, well, the third fight when he gassed that little slugger. So. This fight was more measured, more um, more tactical. A lot of low kick, leg kicks, low, like calf kicks and kicks to the lower part of the leg. End up dropping Moreno. Figueroa end up dropping Moreno at least three times with leg kicks. Absolutely brilliant and new. Well, the, was for this camp was the first one that he was training with uh, Henry Cejudo, or has he always been training with him? I think this might be the first one. I, that's I, I haven't seen anything about that until recently, when they started to show the build up to the fight. They would show um, a certain potential heavyweight and Figgy next to each other in the middle we'll with get to that guy next. Eventually. Um. What do you think, though? Wait, so, like, what's your take on on Cyril's? Not sorry, not Cyril. We'll get to that later. But on Figgy's game plan, did you like what you saw, or do you think Marino just may have uh, had a little bit of an off night? It was a extreme. It was a razor close fight. Yeah, I mean, I forty-seven from all three judges. Right. I thought the first first two rounds, Marino looked pretty sharp in it. But then after that, it just seemed Figueredo got him. He knew. I think the leg kicks might have uh, slowed down the movement. Yeah, his leg was done. Yeah, that was bad. He had some. Uh, he had some obvious injuries to that left leg. I, w- I really want to um, point out something too. At as much volume as. Marino was able to get off because he threw a lot of strikes. He didn't land a ton, but he did throw a lot. That could be a factor as well, even though stamina issues are, are rare for guys at 125 pounds. They they usually can, you know, fight at a really, really, really high volume pace. Um, Marino landed some good shots, and he, he stunned Fig- Figgy a couple times. And I noticed that whenever – it was a power strike battle, which wasn't often. 
Marino was getting some good shots in back and figgy up. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to put him down or straight keep that consistently going, especially in the third, fourth, and fifth rounds. So that fight, um, I picked Figgy in that one. I thought that uh, him being humbled and getting beat the way he did by Marino in a third fight second. was a huge lesson. Was second What's up? Fight. They only fought three times. Wait. I'm 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 goofing again. Uh yeah, in the second fight. In my mind, that was a fourth fight. <laughs> ah, it's a draw. Moreno Figueredo. So they're one one one. They got one more to uh see who's the best man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a um it's gonna be a good one. Is that the first time there's been like uh I don't even know what you call it after a trilogy? What's it mm. called? A quadruple? But I don't even know what you call it. I don't even know. Is that the first time there's a four fight championship fight? I think this is the first time for sure. I, in fact, I'm I'm sure of it. I don't, I can't even remember even any potentials for a fourth title fight because most title fights, most um, those title shots end. At two, like it's hard to get back to the title multiple times. Yeah, let alone challenge the exact same guy multiple times for the title. Like you, you see in trilogies, common. You might get a champ that gets three dethroned, and then that that challenger that won, they run it back. You know what I mean? So yeah, they're probably gonna line them up with a different fight for each of them. Because if that point didn't get taken away in the first fight, Figueredo would have won the decision and instead of it being a draw. Yeah. he. I, I thought Figgy looked really good in the first fight. And, you know, obviously, you know, Moreno made some adjustments. And he, he – I think he had uh, Figgy's number, even though there was, comp- um, like, whispers and rumors about Figgy being injured – and lacking motivation going into the third, well, to the second fight. Um, I just, I give a lot of credit. I give all the credit to Moreno. He looked great. Um, yeah, I think, look, I would, I want to see a different fight for the title. I don't think an immediate fourth fight makes sense, but I'm sure this is going to happen again down the line. Regardless. Who's, uh, who's in the rankings? Let me pull it up real quick. Ooh, Askarov. Tantoja. Yeah, I don't think uh, Kai Carr is going to leapfrog everybody and get a title shot. Yo, I think he already has a loss to one of the guys, or if not both. Did uh, Brandon Roy Val win? Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I didn't catch that one. Yeah, you won a split decision last week. So, dang. Then Pantoja's out there. Pantoja might fight uh, Marino again. Mm. I can see that. And then, yeah, I can, I can definitely see um, getting a, a top guy. Because, look, if he wins... And he fight, he's right back in the title picture. Oh, for uh, let me for Moreno. Back, uh, Kai Car France is uh fighting Askar Askarov next in March. Okay. So and at least Pantoja is up. It, it could be Pantoja fighting for the belt. You never know. Oh. Well, I don't know. That'd be tough. okay. Flyweight division is moving. Man, could you could you imagine though? It was so crazy. Um, five years ago, we were talking about this division being closed, and then Henry Saludo comes along. We'll save that for the uh, the main pod. All right, all right. It's interesting, man. You got some new got some stars now with Moreno and um, Figgy. So 
that division looks like it's going to be on the here to stay. 125, baby. But um, we can move to the big boys, to the baddest men on the planet. Um, Francis Ngannou overcame a lot of adversity to beat Stipe Miocic in that rematch because Stipe schooled him going uh, the first time they fought. He uh, had a couple of fights after that. It wasn't an immediate um, rematch, obviously, because he got dominated. Two more fights. He has the lackluster fight with Derek Lewis. Um, knockout Blades. Knockout Rosenstrike. Wasn't Tyler Shaw in there, too? And you know what? Yeah, he did get Kane. Because that was when that was when uh the knee injury, but we found out that was an uppercut. Uppercuts usually um can buckle knees now. So um yeah. Oh, no, then he gets no, back no. to he went on a, a tear after the Derrick Lewis fight. Blades, Kane, JDS. Oh, JDS was in that one too? Yeah, Rosenstroop, and then Stipe again. Damn. He went on a tear after that. That's a long road back to the title. Oh, in between that, weren't DC and Stipe having the trilogy and all that? Yes. So he, I, that makes sense. So that makes sense why he didn't. Because it, <clears throat> it's not like heavyweight's super deep. Um, there are some guys to look out for, though, that are on up and up, that are, on the, uh, that are, looking, that are young and promising. Some guys across the pond. We'll talk about that later. But um, I think we should really. Talk about Cyril in this one because in this fight, consensus was basically that Cyril Gunn was already the champ. I mean, he looked like no other heavyweight we've ever seen in his build up to this fight. My only questions about him ever were experience because talent is there. He has everything. He got the size. He has the obvious talent. Didn't seem to slow down with stamina or anything like that. Although being a really big heavyweight at 6'4", 265. Um, and the amount of movement he uses. like Cyril is very rare for a heavyweight. He, he moves more like a guy at 155 pounds. Where do you think he goes next? And what, what, first of all, what do you see in this fight? And what do you think is next for Cyril? Cyril? Probably Blades. And Blaze might beat him. I seen something in that grappling department that didn't look too good. And you can't tell me Francis is a great wrestler all of a sudden. Maybe that time at Extreme Couture and had, and being coached by um, Kamaru Usman is paying off. However, I think Blaze is miles ahead as far as wrestling technique is concerned. Yeah, Francis is just to look out for this year. I think Francis is just so strong in the horsepower department because a lot of that stuff was just muscle. Like the one slam, if after he caught the kick, that wasn't actually that technical. No, he just basically threw him to the ground. He did it with two uh, torn MCLs. It was both of them, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Reports that Francis had tears in both knees. Which makes sense now that you look back when he, he, he hasn't never seen him wear a knee sleeve in the octagon. He had two on last night. I'm surprised he didn't go for uh, leg kicks. But then again, that power is coming up top when you go low. Well, he did go for him, but nothing. he never committed to it. He was he did mostly just a little bit of like a touch and go. Yeah, a little just, yeah like little, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think he want – look, and then we don't know. Maybe Cyril has some, some issues as well. Hard to tell, but one thing we do know is a lot of guys get gun shy around in Ghana. It's different when he's in there with you. He trained with him. That was the narrative. Mm-hmm. You know? I wonder what's going to happen with Francis. They're going to pay that man? They're going to let him box? I, I don't think he wants to go – Six rounds with Tyson Fury. I'd rather see him against Wilder, honestly. That's the. I think that's the only fight that makes sense as far as him having a shot to win. Yeah. I think Tyson Fury's gonna box his fucking head off. 
for sure. Oh. For sure. <laughs> I mean, they'll do it with MMA gloves, but it's that's a that's a different story. If you they do it with MMA gloves, he has a shot because the defense is a little different. Yeah, like the the actual technique for defense is different, but still, um, pure boxing skill wise, nah. Tyson's miles ahead. But there was a light heavyweight uh former champion that had a tweet. And he's looking forward to something. Mm, mm, mm. Looking to make some more records. We might have to see what, what, what comes to be in twenty twenty two. Might be the return of the Mac. What do you say? If this was the uh apex of the heavyweight division or something like that? Yeah. I I guess that's John's that was JBJ's little uh I'm not impressed by your performance moment. Man, if his skills translates over to heavyweight, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's only one way that Francis wins I and mean, you know it's a knockout, but will he be able to hit him? Yeah, man, nah, Francis needs to work on ground and pound because that was – a lot of people – A lot of, I got a lot of messages from some betters and some, like, some of the, the my friends or whatever talking about the, the review of that. And everybody thought it was boring because they felt like Francis just laid on him. You know, and um, there were moments where – look, he had a lot of top control. Yep. Francis had, what, over seven minutes of top control? And landed how many strikes? I mean, how many? Fuck, landed. How many did he attempt? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, how many times did he try to hit him on the ground? Not many. Yeah, not many. It was. It was mostly. I think it, it looked like Francis was just trying to impose his will and hold Cyril down. And I think when he was afraid, this is me just trying to figure out why not. Why is he not throwing strikes? But I think. In his mind, he didn't want to let go. Like he didn't want to let go of position. So he felt like I uh, felt like every time he would go for a strike, Cyril would make a move to get up, and he would just, you know, pull him back to the ground and keep him there. But it looked real John Fitch like, <laughs> real lay and pray like. Lay and pray. I haven't seen that in so long or heard that. Lay and pray, lay and pray is back, I guess. Well, Francis, he's he's committed to one more fight, but he could sit out for a year. He's not getting any younger. So they either pay him some money, extend his contract, or we're gonna have another interim champion. Yeah. This is this is terrible. Like why is this hap- why is this still going on? This has been too many times we had to talk about fighter pay. And last night, somebody on the main card, I'm not going to say who that somebody is, um, made 10,000, made 10K, 10K. No. Yeah. So yeah, I saw the five slips. Five? Slip. No, no, 10, 10, 10. Oh. Made 10K, 10, 10, 10, 10 uh, the show and 10 to win. He got a performance. His, good enough for him is he got a performance bonus. So they gave him extra 10K. But still. It's only 10K for the performance now? It's not 50 no more? I I don't know if um he got like the actual performance bonus. And I, I might be misquoting this because I, I did skim over it. Oh. I it when it looked like it, to me it looked like he won 10K plus 10K um with a bonus of so like 10K to make it 30. Anyone but I could be wrong. Card. Pay-per-view. Yeah. Wow. Wait. No, no, no. He was the um, contender series guy. Brilliant performance. Oh, he was on the Brilliant. prelims. Yeah, it was, a, it was a prelim. Okay, that's understandable. It's it is. I mean, like it makes sense because we're used to this. We're used to it now. But it just so here's here here are the. Figures. I'm looking at them now. Okay, so they were in Cali, so we got to pay a little bit of um, a little bit of cheese to the California government. Oh, yeah, that's why some people uh, don't like fighting there. The taxes. Yeah. 
It's brutal. So Kay Hansen made 17-17. Uh, let's see. Well, they're it was building the, up their names, so that's expected. But if you're the champion, you should be getting paid not less than a million. Okay. Well, you wanna know what Davidson uh Figgy made? How much? A hundred and fifty grand. And Moreno? Two hundred grand. The challenger and champion. That's Michelle the- Pereira? 50-50. His, his opponent made his opponent made twelve twelve. That's the main card. I think he stepped in on short notice too. All right. The well, Portuguese um, guy. Yeah. Trevin got Giles made uh 45 45 45. He's been around for a while. Cody Stammen, 65, 65. Do they still do that thing? You remember how the Reebok contract was? It was like the more fights you have in the UFC, the more you get paid? I guess. And he is very active. Saeed, so I, Saeed Nurmagomedov made 25, 25 for that fight. It was quick, so it's a quick 50 grand, but still kind of, kind of low. Considering, like, look, he, he obviously, uh, Ngano made 600K and... Um, Cyril Gunn made half a million. So it's like, look, <clears throat> that's really low compared to like the top tier of boxing. Obviously, it's extremely low. I mean, I would imagine that's why a lot of guys get super. They get the title, and then you see you start seeing the negotiations get a little bit sour. That's I, I can see why. Um, John Jones is like. Fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, wh- at what point are they going to... It's not like they don't... We haven't even seen them pay more. And you know that a lot of it goes... has to do with draw, but look, that's the promoter. You know what I mean? Like, you're the promoter. That ain't got nothing to do with the fighter. Though. The fighter should be getting paid. Um, It should be similar. Like, it's such a big discrepancy between what top... Fighters in the UFC make like Connor, because I mean he's he's somewhere around four to five million a fight. It's the the drawing power they have. I'm pretty sure Dana White was hoping Francis would lose so he wouldn't have to deal with this again. Well, he's gonna I, have I to now. He uh, put the belt on him, did he? He didn't. He did not. I mean, he usually does, right? Yep. Issues. How are you gonna have your boss mad at you? Why is your boss? Why is your boss so petty? Hey, come on, man. I mean, you're the boss. I ain't gonna lie, man. It's almost like some wrestling stuff, some WWE stuff, man. Like some Vince McMahon shit. Yeah, some Vince McMahon, and then you got Cyril Gunn as like the corporate guy, and then Francis over here, like Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know, going against the corporation or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah, little uh, Francis um, Nurmagomedov. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, man, because, like, look, what's next, man? Does he does he fight another – does he get another fight? Does he defend one more time? Or does he sit out a year now and then – Trying to get a boxing match because any any fight he has in boxing, whether it be um, Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury, I would say he makes north of five million for that fight. He's and it's easy to me. It's like an easy choice because I don't think he's gonna take no fight unless they pay him yeah. more. I mean, he's gonna leave. He's gonna be the first guy to leave champion, like from the UFC, without getting another contract. Mm. Yeah, I mean, all, all the others retired, right? Champion, they either lost the belt or retired. Mm-hmm. GSP, he retired after he won the middleweight. He's the, Wait, uh, what did he say? Habib retired after he defended yeah. the lightweight title. And wasn't, um, well, he didn't lose the title. Did did, no, GSP didn't lose the, the welterweight title. He, he just retired. retired. That one too. 
Oh no, yeah, he took so... a break. All right. Then he came back and retired after uh, he beat little... Bisping. Correct. So yeah, look, I think um, uh, money money aside, who do you think is the next challenger, if any? to the heavyweight throne if we were to make another title fight. You see any, I mean, Blades? Uh, is the any, time he fights uh, Francis anyways. Well, I'm saying we, we pick Blades to get the, the matchup with um with Cyril gone. Cyril or Stipe for Blades. Okay. And then maybe John Jones if he actually comes out. That's the only way I see Francis fighting. They're going to have to pay him somewhat kind of money that he's asking for and then John Jones fighting him in the summer uh UFC International Fight Week or whatever. I'm off you know I'm all for it. That's I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a fan. So like for for me, that's the fight I wanna see. I hope they get the numbers right and get these guys in the cage because come on man. Like we're keeping some of the best fighters in the UFC out of the UFC because what? Come on, man. It's not like you don't have – you got to pay pay your athletes. It's a professional sport. It's like one of the biggest sports in the country, in the world. It's not really. like they're not making money. I mean, it's kind of sad to watch almost. But I don't want to see the time pass with all these, you know, fighters – not getting paid because it's not just the champions. You look look across the board. This is a professional. These are guys that are they are professional fighters, and they're fighting on the biggest stage. MMA has to offer, and twenty k a fight. That come on. That's I think the minimum we should be looking at is like forty for any fight. Forty and forty. Forty forty should be men. You're fighting at the top of the. You're at the top of the. You're the this is the biggest game in town. You know, it's not like the uh, cost for training. You're paying your nutritionists, your coaches, your training partners that you might have come in, stuff like that. They don't talk about that. Nah, and taxes. They, I guess they, <laughs> and taxes, like I guess they treat it like this, this is a big platform, and you can use this as like a platform. And um, get the UFC's notoriety and backing, and this is an opportunity just to be on the big stage. That's kind of how they're treating it, as opposed to like how like the other major sports treat their athletes. Where the, like if you go to NFL, they collectively bargain and they get paid a premium because they're playing in the most premium version of football. Like there's a minimum salary to every single player. That's in the in the game. It's not like it's, you know, and it's 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 significant. Yep. You know what I mean, like even if you're a rookie, you're gonna make really good money playing professional football. So being a professional mixed martial artist, especially at the top of the game, is just not still not enticing. That's it's still not like you're not making any real money unless you're a huge pay per view draw, which is like three guys in a whole thing. That's one thing Jake Paul is probably doing some good with is trying to get that out there. The fighters pay. Yeah. Because this is silly. I mean, looking at it, I'm just kind of like, it's kind of cringy looking at this pay sheet and looking at the date. It's 2022, bro. Like, I can understand this was like 15 years ago. You know, but come on, people are still making 10-10 on a pay-per-view? They, they Not have, uh, on ESPN's payroll now too, man. Like, what's going on? Somebody's being a little greedy, bro. Ain't gonna name no names, but you know what it is. God, yeah, uh, that um, Jack Della, Madam Delina, whatever that guy, ten ten, main card. Insane. You might as well and, say he made 10K because, you know, he probably got paid everything else. I'm just saying that it is that is gross. It's gross. I it got it, it, something has to give, man. Till they do, um, you're gonna always you're gonna until something changes in the scales of the fi- of fighter pay, 
you don't keep seeing shit like this. You don't keep seeing the champions get the belt. And I mean, for some of them, they're in it for the pr prestige of being champion. But most of these guys are in it because they're prize fighters. So once they get to the top, they're going to want a bigger prize. Yep. I mean, this is, I guess it's going to go, it's, it's an ongoing battle. It's going to keep going forward, but we're not. We're going to wrap this up. Francis, get paid. Do your thing, bro. Congratulations on the win. Congrats to Figgy for taking his belt back. And hopefully we can get Derek Lewis back in Octagon at least one more time against a certain John. That'd be dope. If not, um, I wouldn't mind seeing him box. I want to see homie get paid. He definitely deserves it. All right, so... But a podcast coming up soon. Within the next Absolutely. few days, we'll have a real pod. Nice uh, yeah, breakdown today. Yeah, some little, little short, little teaser, little post-fight reaction slash, you know, little teaser. Get a little small stuff going there. If you like this content, don't be afraid to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, support your boys. In the Ashy Knuckle Yard. I'm B. Woods for Ashy Knuckle MMA. Mosey P, zip it up. Zip it out. Holla. Peace.